Good leash walking skills can be one of the toughest things to train a dog. Today we'll see where inertia is on this critical skill. I'm Zach George. I train dogs. This is my new dog, and I'm gonna show you how I trained her from day one. Things definitely won't always go smoothly. You can start from the beginning, or you can pick up anywhere. Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode. When you put into motion an approach based on love and respect, your results will forever remain in motion. This is Inertia. Welcome to the Dog Training Experience. We're in Alaska, we're traveling right now, and I was looking through my comments recently, and one of the most common things that you guys ask about is dog food. Which foods are good? Look, there's a lot of really good dog foods on the market, but I always recommend that people feed their dog a super premium food. And if your dog's food is good enough, you can even use it as a currency to train them. Make sure that you feel okay and comfortable with the ingredients in your dog's food. Solid Gold is a perfect example of a top-notch dog food. For example, in this food, there's a variety of different protein sources, like lamb and ocean whitefish, which is great for healthy omega fatty acids. Plus, there are 20 superfoods in this one bag of dog food. Things like kelp, blueberries, and broccoli. I just wish that I had the discipline to eat this healthy. Inertia, maybe you and I should be on the same diet. Solid Gold makes a variety of high quality foods like this and some awesome supplements too, like human grade bone broth and sea meal. Save 30% on select Solid Gold products by going to my special link, solidgoldpet.com slash Zach. I'll have a link in the description below. There are few things that are more important and more challenging to train than teaching a dog to walk nicely with a loose leash. Many of you have been keeping up with our journey on this so far, and Inertia has shown fantastic improvements. But we are so overdue for an update on how she's doing with her neighborhood walking skills. So that's what we're going to do today. Since we are in a brand new neighborhood that Inertia has never been to before, I've exercised her with a little bit of fetch before this lesson to help get some of that excess energy out. If you're having issues with training your leash walking, ask yourself if you're exercising your dog before their leash training sessions. That in and of itself can help relieve your dog's frustration from not being able to walk everywhere. If Inertia had her way, she'd like to go up to that front door or sniff that yard over there or maybe go find a squirrel or a dog to play with, right? So staying right by my side and walking extra slowly are pretty low down on the list of things that Inertia wants to do right now. Even though I've exercised her, since this is a brand new neighborhood that she's never been to before, for the beginning part of our walk right now, I'm gonna give her a little bit of space to explore and tolerate some pulling while she takes in her new surroundings. I really wanna be empathetic to the fact that she's a curious dog, as most dogs are, and this is a challenging thing for her to do. The whole reason that leash walking is such a particularly challenging thing for many of us to teach our dogs is that dogs do walk much faster than we do naturally, so we have to really Really teach them to slow down their pace and walk with us as we go down the street while tethered to a six foot leash. Traditionally, you guys have heard me talk about the two main types of walks. You have training walks and then you have well, regular walks. A training walk is where you are just focusing on teaching the fundamentals. Maybe you're just in front of your house, for example, working on basic training. In other words, you don't really have a destination in mind. You're just focused on training your dog to walk nicely, check in with you, and change directions when you change directions, and so on. During training walks, it is important just to verify that your dog can perform well in short bursts in relatively familiar places before you start asking them to listen in more challenging places. Now, a normal walk is probably what you think of when you think about taking a walk. You're actually trying to get somewhere, for example. These days, Inertia and I are focused more on a hybrid walk. In other words, you know, I'll let her explore. I'll tolerate some minor pulling here and there, but I'll also sprinkle in some training sessions there and insist on better and better leash manners. I mean, like everything in dog training, polite leash walking is phased in over time. You don't just go from an unruly dog to a perfect dog. There's a lot of intermittent steps in between. Now, if you're looking for a really detailed written guide to all of my leash walking advice, check out my book, Guide to a Well-Behaved Dog. I'm gonna have that in the description. So these days I'm really focused on getting Inertia's attention on me whenever I ask for it. Inertia, look at me. Good, lie down. Perfect, very good. So that's evidence right there that I can get Inertia's attention on me, which I do test for periodically, asking her to do basic things like sit or lie down 
or ignore that airplane that's really loud. But since this is a hybrid walk, part training and part leisure, I don't want to overdo this, you know, asking for her attention all the time. I still want her to be able to tune out and sniff the wind or the ground or the grass or whatever and just be a dog. It's important to walk this line and it can definitely be easier said than done. Now I'm still using treats in our training, but that's not the only currency I'm using to reward her. In other words, you can see right now she's into treats, she's into her environment, and so I can use both of those things to really reinforce desired behavior. When she's behaving well, we just keep on walking. If she starts to get a little unruly or starts to pull, I can simply stop, work on doing something like lie down, you know, and finding something easy to reward her for. Very good. So it's really important to ask yourself, what is the most powerful currency that you can use in that particular moment? So throughout her walk, her interest shifts from treats to simply being able to explore on the walk. So use both of those to your advantage during leash training. You might also want to consider using a toy as well if your dog likes to play tug of war or something like that. Simply making your dog act a certain way through physical punishment or force is unlikely to deliver long-term results without significant side effects. So I'm fine using treats at this point in our training for leash walking, and you should be too. I mean, really, if you're focused on training an intricate concept like leash walking to your dog, you can't rush through it. It can really take a lot of time for a dog to adapt to walking at our slower human pace in the real world. And I love how she's walking right here. She's checking in with me. If she checks in with me again, just like that, I'm gonna go ahead and offer her a treat. Those are what you really look for, where your dog is like, hey, I think this means I get good stuff sometimes. I'm happy to also let her go and take a sniff of the grass over here for a second and check it out. All right, good. And look, did you see that automatic check-in? Yes, I love that. And again, I want her to enjoy the walk, not just be constantly focused on me and looking at me, you know? Walks are fun for all of us. You hear that distraction right there? That's really got her attention. It's a new animal. She's never heard it before because, I mean, we're in Alaska. Lie down. Good. Yes. I really wanted to test even little distractions like that. Some new animal. I don't know. Is it a bird? Was it a squirrel? squirrel. It was it Really? Yeah. <laughs> it was a squirrel. Wow. I didn't know squirrels could sound like that. I noticed that she was mildly distracted, but I was like, hey, if I can get her to lie down while distracted, even though it's a minor distraction, that's good practice. Now, there are some distractions that are way too intense for many dogs, depending on where you are in your training process. Inertia has a weak spot for dogs. She loves to play with dogs and really wants to interact with every dog she sees. And that's something you've been watching us work on over time. And she's getting better and better at that. Ideally, I don't want her to start barking because she heard something new over there. I'd rather kind of keep this distance right here and then have her lie down. <laughs> Good job. The important thing I want you to remember is when dealing with distractions on a walk, distance is your friend. You wanna create distance until your dog becomes more and more reliable over time with the more life experience that they acquire. <laughs> All right, so she's obviously distracted and barking at something. <laughs> Very good example. That's what I do when she becomes distracted. I resist pulling her away unless it's urgent and I need to get her away from whatever it is that's causing her to behave that way. But I got her to voluntarily go without pulling on the leash at all. And then I created distance until I could verify that she was reliable by asking her to lie down. In that case, I walked away a few feet and I thought I would try, but I could see in her eyes she was still pretty distracted. So I thought it might be a better idea to go a few more feet before asking her to do something basic like a lie down in this case. You may also notice that I choose to walk inertia on a harness. That's because I don't want any tension around her neck. Now, a lot of people are under the impression that a harness like this may actually encourage your dog to pull, but I gotta tell you, I don't see it that way. See, a harness like this is just a management device. It's not like I'm using it to train her or physically manipulate her in any way at all. The goal is to actually teach her to think through her actions so that she actually understands how to behave rather than relying on being told how to behave. For me, it's vital when teaching a dog that I find a way to motivate them to do whatever it is that I'm asking and that I don't force them to do it. But dogs are smart, so they'll learn this as long as you take the time to patiently teach them. When you're on a walk with a dog, you're going to find things like bicycles driving by that your dog finds very tempting and distracting. There's no way around that. It's important to really be understanding of that and work with them through those distractions as you've seen us do. Leash walking takes lots of time, patience, and consistency, but you can do it. I know you can. Go to solidgoldpet.com slash Zach and save 30% on select solid gold products.
Subscribe to this channel and get a copy of both of my books. Follow us on Instagram to see what I'm training inertia every day. In the next episode, we're going to continue our Alaska dog training adventure. See you next time.